All right. So you have a lot of people um, with good reason talking about the banning of Mr. President Trump from the Twitter platform. And as well, only a few days ago, you had um, Amazon Web Services shutting down uh, Parler as well as um, Google and Apple pulling it from their uh app stores so that you, even if it hadn't been shut down, you would not have been able to install it on any Android or iOS device. Um, I think, you know, today I was seeing some documents talking about how, um, you know, Amazon Web Services had been warning uh, Parler for like months or something that they were violating their terms of service. Uh, because they are allowing unmoderated content to, you know, be posted like a uh, violent shit and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> but you know, even notwithstanding that, I mean, I think it's pretty fucked up that a, a hosting service has a terms of service to begin with. Um, but even notwithstanding that, if if Amazon had not pulled Parler, then Google and Apple were able to effectively nullify them by because those platforms are walled gardens and the only way to install uh, non-approved software on your Android or Apple device is by jailbreaking your phone which is an illegal act because your phone doesn't belong to you. It's, it's a really fucked up situation but anyway um, thinking about you know uh, all of this shit happening first of all the two things that come to mind are obviously um, the relevance of hosting. We really need to um, be more mindful of who is hosting our content. Um, you know, even our independent websites, which we should all have, um, are most likely hosted by a company like Amazon that has some terms of service. And obviously, um, you're probably not going to be uh, like attracting the kind of attention that would, you know, inspire your host to uh, threaten you with um, being deplatformed <clears throat> with having your hosting pulled. I mean, hosts really don't do that sort of thing to small content creators um, or small, like, people, small bloggers or whatever, small websites. Um, but then, you know, the platforms themselves that we use, like this very platform, youtube.com, um, these are all, you know, private corporations and everything that we say is subject to their approval. Everything that we say is their property on their platform and they have um, the ultimate right to, you know, allow us to continue to reside here or not. And that includes people like the president. So, um, you know, what is the solution to this problem of the tech overlords? running rampant with the power that they have not newly acquired. They've been in control of society for at least a decade now. Um, but now they're able to not only like, I don't really care about them banning President Trump because I'm not an American and I don't care about him. Like, I didn't really follow his tweets or anything. Like, I don't care too much about that personally. Like, I understand that it's significant symbolically or whatever. He's like a big um, tweeter. So is a big deal, one of the biggest tweeters of all time, but um, <clears throat> what I find more alarming personally is um, Amazon just shutting down an entire website, an entire social network that, um, you know, I've never used Parler and I understand that it's mostly associated with the alt-right, but I wonder if, uh, you know, 4chan is next or like, um, you know, some other uh, infamous hotspots. I mean, where, where are the leftists? Hotspots apparently masked it on. Anyway, I'm gonna get into that. But um, you know, what is the solution to this problem? There are two that present themselves. Sorry, excuse me. But um, you know, the first is a technological solution that already exists, which is uh, federating software or software federations. It's basically uh, the same kind of principle as BitTorrent, but applied to uh, things like websites or social networks and that already exists. One common um, or more popular example is PeerTube, um, which is like a 
YouTube equivalent where people can host um, videos. You basically, you have your own server space. You um, run an instance of this network on your server, and then people can access the network through your instance, and they can also access, and, and you can post content on um, the network via your instance, via your server, and people can access that content through other instances. So I could um, have a PeerTube instance on my website, and um, you know, you'd go to my website and look at my content, and then also in the manner of YouTube, look at you know other content, just browse around the content that is on PeerTube. And then you could you could also do that via somebody else's website who has a PeerTube instance. And you could look at their content, but you could also see my content by accessing it through the website. So it's basically federation. Like you take down one website, but the content is still there. It's all still up because um, you know, people are hosting it on different servers. So instead of it being hosted on an individual um, machine, as in a peer, I think there is actually some kind of uh, BitTorrent. I don't actually know too much, but I don't really care. Um, you know, that's an ins that's an example of software federation, and there are many other examples. Uh, Mastodon is like a kind of Twitter clone that exists in the same kind of way. <clears throat> It's basically social media where people can post crap and uh, you know you access it and are able to post on it in the same way and uh, it's like more secure because um, you know you can't take down the entire thing the software itself the code is open source and that can that will live on forever no matter what you know the FBI does or what the CIA or what you know or Amazon who may host a lot of the um, instances is able to do the code will exist forever and um, you know there will still remain some websites some instances that are hosted on non Amazon um, servers uh, servers that presumably have you know better security or more um, you know willing to uh, withstand the the wrath of American imperialism anyway so that's an, an example of um, one solution that, um, you know, it reminds me a lot, I mean, literally, of Proudhon um, and his, you know, th anarchist theories, his, like, very early socialist anarchist theories of uh, how an anarchist society would work, which is, you know, federations in the same sort, like, recallable delegates and uh, everything being um, constructed from the ground up, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and like a bunch of these smaller um, organizations or like, um, you know, bodies, neighborhoods, workplaces, you know, wherever a group of people meet and do business together, they form, you know, a little council or whatever, and then uh, they elect their delegates and they all meet up at, you know, national levels and like down from there. And, uh, you know, they have all their whatever. It's it's the same principle, and that enough should be um sign that it is ripe for exploitation because, as we all know, anarchism is really just, you know, neoliberalism for lefties. So what is, like, another option, potentially, for dealing with the problem of uh, big tech uh, media censorship? It's... um not in itself um, the end goal, but I think it is more, it is better in the media term, which is the nationalization of um, these big tech companies, because that is the only way that you're going to be able to deal with these sorts of issues of like inciting violence or whatever, um, or like posting, you know, bad content, it's content that is dangerous to society. Um, but in a way that, um, you know, is democratic and uh, is not going to immediately fall prey to the same um, things that, you know, cause anarchism to um, succumb to, you know, reactionary people and behaviors. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say for now. I mean, I've spoken long enough. Until next time.